In this video, we're gonna be setting up the Raspberry Pi AI hat with YOLO object detection, and more importantly, we're gonna be learning how to use it in your projects with Python code. We're gonna go through installing the hat hardware and software, as well as exploring some demo scripts that involve doing something if a certain object is detected, doing something if a certain number of objects are detected, and getting the position of a detected object on the screen. Let's get right into it. To follow along, you'll need a Pi 5. A two gigabyte or larger size model will work here. You'll also need an AI hat. This guide will work with both the 13 and 26 top version. You'll also need a camera module. We're using the V3 module here, and you may need a camera cable adapter. The Pi 5 comes with a smaller camera connector and your camera may not come with the needed adapter for it, so it's worth just double checking. And you'll find links to these things below, as well as a link to the written guide, where we also have the things there, as well as all the commands and code that we'll be using in this guide. Installing the hat is nice and straightforward, but there is one thing you might need to watch out for. It comes with this header extender to lengthen your pins, but after installing the hat, these pins might not fully poke through. If you need these pins exposed to plug in hardware, you'll find a link below to some longer pins that fix this issue. To install a hat, first put that header extension onto the Pi's GPIO pins like so. Then screw on the four standoffs that come with the hat. Then lift the PCIe tab on the Pi and insert the hat cable so it sits nice and square in there and push back down on the tab to secure it in place. Then gently slide the hat onto the pins, being careful not to bend them. They are quite long and very prone to bending. After that, connect the camera cable to the camera. It uses the same tab locking system and then connect the camera to the Pi. It's the same deal again. Lift the tab, sit the cable in and push it back down to secure it. Four screws to hold the hat down and you are ready to go. Now go ahead and install PiOS onto the micro SD card, whack it into your Pi, and then run through the first time installation. There's nothing special we need to do in this process here. All right, now that we're in the desktop, we can get cracking. We're just gonna go ahead and open up a new terminal window, and we're gonna update our Pi with update and upgrade. Then with this line, we're gonna install all the drivers and software needed to run the hat itself. And this can take a good five minutes or so to install, so go and grab a cup of tea or coffee. And once that's finished, just go ahead and restart your Pi. Now we are ready to install the basic Python pipelines from Halo's GitHub. First things first, let's clone the repository from their GitHub, which is really easy to do with this line here. Once that's finished downloading, if you head to your Pi's home folder like so, you can see this folder that we just downloaded here. And this is gonna be the home of all of our Python scripts and pretty much everything we're going to be doing in this video. Now back to our terminal, we're gonna to need to tell it to work out of that folder that we just created with this change directory command here. And you can see with this blue text here, our command terminal is now working in this folder. Now we need to run the handy installation file that the folks at Halo have made for us and this sets up the rest of what we need and we can do so with this command here. And again, this one may take a good five minutes or so to install. And just a little thing here that left us scratching our heads, if you ever change the hat, say you go from a 13 to 26 top hat, you will need to run this command again for the Pi to correctly recognize it. Whatever AI hat you have on the Pi when you run this installation is the hat that it gets set up for. Once that installation has finished, reboot your Pi once more. And with that, we have set up everything we need. Now, a quick little exploration of what we have here. In our Halo's example folder, we have two very important folders in here. We have the resources folder, which is gonna have all of the YOLO models that have been installed with that installation line we just run. And they've also been converted to the HEF file format, which the hat needs. It's a specific format specifically for the AI hats. In there, we're also gonna have the basic pipelines folder, which has all of our pipeline code and demo codes to run with those pipelines. Now, what is a pipeline in this context? Well, long story short, it's a series of code that allows us to easily interact with the hat itself. Writing code to directly talk to the hat is very complex and quite challenging, but Halo has provided us with some pipelines, some pre-written bits of code that allow us to easily write very simple human readable code that can talk with the hat. We call this high level code. Essentially, it's just gonna take our high level code and run all the complicated things behind the scenes and do all that really low level work for us to get it to run 
on the HATS processor. It is definitely possible to make your own pipeline for custom projects, but it's not easy. So we're just gonna be using the example object detection pipeline that Halo has provided for us. All right, let's give this all a test with some demo object detection code. And a quirk of all of this is that we need to run our Python scripts from the command line. But we do need to set up the terminal before we do that. First things first, we need to use that change directory command to get it working out of that folder. And then we'll need to run this source command to get it to work out of the virtual environment that that install command from before set up. And you can see here with this Venv Halo 5 RPI examples, we're working in that virtual environment. And if you ever close this terminal or restart your Raspberry Pi, you will need to repeat these two steps before you can run these demo Python scripts again. So let's go ahead and run one. We're gonna call on a Python script that is in the basic pipelines folder, and it's called uh, detection.py. And with that, we are up and running with our object detection. Now, this is just some demo test footage that it's analyzing, but as you can see, our hat is running object detection. And if you ever want to stop your script from running, you can just click into your terminal window and hit Control C. All right, let's now go ahead and use the camera as the input for our model. So we're just gonna run the same line, but instead we're gonna do dash dash help on the end. And in here is a whole bunch of options that the example pipeline allows us to run. And as you can see here, we can do input. And if we go dash IRPI, we can use the camera as the input. We're not gonna go over everything in here, but there are definitely some handy things to check out. And so let's run the same code as before, but let's say use the camera as an input. Ah, oh, and there we go. I'm a person, believe it or not. That's a cup. Oh, cup. Oh, there we go. Keyboard cup, it looks like it's working. All right, now we have our hat running object detection with our camera, let's do something with it. So go ahead and open up the basic pipelines folder and we're gonna take a look at detection.py. We're just gonna open it up in Thonny. Now this script detections.py is an example of how we can actually use this in our projects with Python code. And so we're just gonna run through it real quickly to see how we can actually use it. So we have three main sections here. We have the top where we import all of our libraries exactly like as we normally do, but then we have this class defined here and also this function here, and this goes all the way down to the end. And these are actually parallels to how we regularly code. You can think of this function called app callback as the while true loop of our code. So this is going to be run every single time our camera feeds in a frame into YOLO. And this class up here is kind of that bit of the code at the top where it runs first, where we might set up our variables and initialize our pins and everything we do. So this code goes through, it imports anything we need. If we needed any extra libraries, we'd import them up here. And then here you can see they're declaring a variable just as an example and see how it's self dot variable. We'll touch on how to manage all this in a little bit. And in here is any functions you want to declare as well. They've just got an example one here as well. So this section runs once and if a variable is not declared in here, it will not be seen in our app callback function here, which is our while true loop. So a lot of this is kind of the structure and the scaffold of running the camera. The first bit kind of just sets everything up we need until we get to the important part here. This is the real meat of our code. This goes through every single thing that has been detected. It then gets the label or the name of the thing that's been detected. It gets the bounding box where the box that it draws around the objects that it's detected. And then it gets the confidence rating of that thing. And then here they've gone up and set up some logic for us. If we've detected a person, then do something. And then the rest of this is to do with drawing on the frame and printing to the shell. Now that is probably enough for some people to go and get coding in their projects, but we've gone ahead and expanded on this and created three practical demos that you can kind of take and fill in the blank to, if this happens, then do this. The first one is to solve a problem that I have in the office. I often have my headphones on and I can't hear if someone walks up behind me. So in this setup, we're gonna use the camera to detect if a person is behind me, and we're gonna rotate this servo to let me know. So to set this up, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new file, and I'm just gonna call it watcher.py. The name doesn't really matter. And so we're gonna go ahead and open that up in Thonny, and you'll be able to find the code on our written page that you can just copy and paste in. And this is very similar to the previous code, but we've just added a few more refinements here and there to make it more practical and easy to use. And we're just gonna go over it because it really highlights how to modify detections.py to fit your needs. 
So first things first, at the very top we've imported Angular Server from the GPIO Zero library. It's just a really easy to use library to control the Pi's GPIO pins. And then in this class here, we're defining a whole bunch of variables that we're going to be using. These ones we use for something called debounce, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. And then here we set up the server as well. And as you can see, every single variable that we set up needs to have this self dot out the front of it. It's just a quirk of working with the framework and the structure that they've given us. Then we go to our app callback function, which is our while true loop. And all of this is exactly the same for the first bit because that's just dealing with the camera and setting it all up and operating it all. And then we get to here and say, we haven't detected anything in this frame yet. Remember, this while true loop runs every single time that a frame is processed by the hat. Then when we start analyzing our detections, we get the name of it, the confidence of it. And if we're confident enough, we're just using 0.4 here, you can change this to be whatever you want. And if that detected thing is a person and you can go ahead and change this to anything you want, want or you could add more things so let's say or we could detect a cup or a dog as well and you can add and change as many as you want here and if we have detected a person we're going to go ahead and set this object detected to true so at this point we've scanned our frame and we've gone yes there is a person in there and now we're going to go and say if we have detected an object we're going to increase the detection counter by one. Now what are we doing here? Well, let's say that we were instead using this code to open up a doggy door when a dog was spotted outside. And computer vision isn't always perfect. Let's say that a cat was wandering by and it's detecting it as a cat, a cat, a cat. And then for one single frame, it detects it as a dog. The dog door would open up and that's not what you want to do. This part of the code essentially says we have to detect that as a dog for four frames in a row for us to be confident enough that it is a dog. So we detect a human behind me, we increase the counter by one, and when that counter reaches four or more, then we will move the servo to let me know that somebody is behind me. We've also got it going the other way. Let's say that a dog is walking up to the door and it's detecting it as a dog, a dog, a dog, and then on one frame it accidentally detects it as a cat. The door would close on the dog and we don't want that to happen. So here we're saying if we don't detect an object, we're going to increase the node detection counter by one. And if that counter is greater than five, we're pretty sure that for five frames in a row if this thing is not being detected then it's not there. And we're of course going to move the servo back to zero. Now there's one more helpful thing on the code and that is the is it active variable here. This check on here essentially means that we only tell the server to move once when it detects a person and when that person goes away and comes back it'll only tell it to do it once again. And this is important because let's say we wanted to send an email every time we saw a cup. The way this code is currently set up is let's hide the cup. You can't see the cup. No email sent. I bring the cup into frame. You see the cup. You send the email once. The cup stays there. You've only sent one email. If it goes away and comes back, you'll send another email. Without this, the cup comes into frame and every single frame that it gets processed with the cup in it, it sends you an email. So it's sending you 30 emails a second. So, long story short, if this code detects a person for more than four frames, it'll move the servo once, and if it doesn't detect a person for more than five frames, it'll move the servo back down once. And a very important thing is that when we want to use one of these variables in our while true loop, here we call it self.detection counter, but down here, if we look, we need to use user underscore data dot detection counter. So at the top here, when we declare anything, we use self dot. And then down here, when we want to use it, we have to have user underscore dot variable name. And of course, if you want to run your own custom Python script, like we just created watcher.py, it's exactly the same command as before, but instead of detections.py, it's just the name of the file. So watches.py. If we go ahead and run that, I'm a person. There we go. And as you can see, when we're running that, if I move out of frame, it says object gone. And if I move back into frame, it says object detected. Also, a quick little tip, if you don't want the FPS to be printed out in the shell like this, you can go ahead to basic pipelines, look for the halo rpy common. We're just gonna open it up in Thony, and then scroll all the way down and you want to look for the function called on FPS measurement. This line right here is the one that's printing out the FPS. So we're just gonna comment it out like so by putting a little hash in front of it save that file, and if we run our script again, you can see we no longer have that FPS being printed out into the shell. And it might be a bit easier to see. No person detected, object gone, object back, object gone, object back, object gone, object back. <laughs> Please don't put that in, Luke. <laughs> 
All right, next lot of demo code is very similar, but instead of if an object is detected, do something, it's if a certain number of objects are detected, then do something. And this is another solution to a problem that I have in my office. I constantly have cups of water. I go and grab one and I come back and they start stacking up on my desk. And so we're gonna build this to say, if three or more cups are detected at my desk, then we're gonna turn on the siren and tell me to go and clean up the cups. So same deal as before, I've gone ahead and copied the code and saved it into a Python file in our basic pipelines folder. And just a quick run through, it's very, very similar to the last one. Instead of setting up a server, we set up an LED, which is the easiest way to control a GPIO pin. And we are controlling an LED in this example. And then at the top here, we create a variable for the object we're detecting. It's just a different way of doing it. And we're obviously gonna be looking for a cup. We're also gonna set up our green and red LEDs. And again, when you set anything up, you need this self dot in front of it. And we're also gonna start by setting the red one off and the green one on. And anytime we use a variable or anything, in here, self dot, just trying to drill that into you. And the code is pretty much exactly the same all through here, all the way through here. And we start the code by saying, we've detected zero objects so far. Then we go through every single thing that's been detected. And so if the confidence is more than 0.4 and the label is target object, which is our cup, as you can see up here. If it has detected a cup, we're gonna increase the count by one. And so if it detects five cups, this counter will be set to five and four and four and so on. And then here we say, if we detect more than three cups in this frame, we're gonna increase the detection counter by one. And this is the exact same debounce code as before. We need to detect more than three cups for more than four frames because we have to be confident that there are that many cups. It's very easy for a mouse or a bowl or something else to be detected as a cup for one single frame. And if there are more than three cups, we'll turn on the red LED, turn off the green LED. And if there aren't more than three cuts, we're gonna turn off the red LED and turn on the green LED. So pretty much the same as before, but we only do something if there is a certain amount of an object being counted. And you can go ahead and set this to three cups or 10 horses or 50 cars or whatever your project calls for. All right, last bit of demo code. This one detects the location of an object detected. It detects it where it is in the frame. Another practical solution, behind me is a whole bunch of resin printers and Resin is quite toxic. You gotta be very careful when you handle it. And we're gonna use this one as a bit of an advanced security system. We're gonna set it up in the corner to watch it. And if anyone gets close to it while it's printing or while it's curing the resin, it's gonna set off an alarm. So before we begin, we're gonna be dealing with relative X and Y coordinates. So on the X axis running this way across the screen, here is gonna be zero and here is gonna be 1.0 and halfway through is gonna be 0.5. Three quarters of the way is gonna be 0.75. And on the Y axis, the top of the screen is gonna be zero, the bottom of the screen is gonna be one and halfway is zero. 0.5 and so on, so on. All right, very similar again. We have the object that we're gonna be looking for. And then here we create the zones that we want to create as a warning area. So this is saying X min is 0.4 and X max is 0.6, which means this is the danger zone here if it's between 40% and 60% of the screen. And then we also have our Y min and Y max. So our Y min if it's in between 30 and 70% of the screen. And these are gonna kind of create a box that if the center of the object is in, it's going to do something. And then pretty much everything is the exact same before, but instead of using detection counter and no detection counter, we're just saying, is it in zone or is it out of the zone? And then down here, we get the name of it, we get the confidence of it. And if the confidence is more than 0.4 and it's the person, then we're gonna get the location of it. And this is just basically gonna get the data coming out of the YOLO model containing the bounding boxes that it's drawing around all of the objects. And then it's gonna calculate the center point of that box with these lines here. Then we're just gonna print out where on the screen that object has been detected. And then we're gonna use the X min X max and Y min Y max to see if the center of that detected object is in the box that we defined at the top. And then again, we have our debounce, which means it has to be detected in that box for four frames for it to do something. We're just gonna be doing lights here. And you can go ahead and modify this exactly the same as you did with your previous scripts. Well, that about wraps that up. Again, you can find all of those code snippets on our written guide linked below. In there, you might also find some other goodies like how to use a different YOLO model and where to find and how to download a bigger, even more powerful model. But regardless of what you wanna do, we hope this video has taught you how to set up the AI hat, how to use it in your projects, and we hope that one of the demo codes we've provided you has helped along the way. If you make anything cool with this or you just need a hand with something, feel free to head on over to our community forums. We're all makers over there and we're happy to help. Until next time though, happy making.